Hello my grandsires, welcome to this week's video! Woo! As you read by the title, this is going to be another Premiere Pro video and unlike the last few times we did a Premiere Pro video, I know what effects we're doing and that is color grading. So with that being said, it's time to head on to the computer to start editing this video. So come on! Alright y'all, we're at my computer right now and this is the video I have right here. I basically pretend to do the intro again. We're in the screen shirt that you see here and I can see it's like grayed out. This is the issue I have with my videos, but I have like a preset that like fixes it, but because it's not a preset video, I actually am gonna like try to fix this here. Right now we're on the basic correction tab and we're gonna see what we can do here. As for the settings we have in this tab, we have temperature, tint, saturation, and then down here in light, we have exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. And these, I don't think you're gonna do too much. Yeah, that's definitely not gonna do much for me. And then bring it all the way up there. That's not gonna help. I double tap to fix it. Tint, let's see. Yeah, same issue. Not gonna do much. Saturation, that actually does something. So we're gonna like leave that alone for now. Exposure, not like exposure too much. And if you bring it all the way down, you're always gonna get like a dark video. And if you bring it all the way up, it looks like some sort of very bright flashback. That's usually what I do for like flashbacks. Maybe not this bright, maybe more like ugh, something like that. Like, that's one way you can get like a flashback color, but that's not what I'm worried about right now. What I'm worried about is getting this fixed. And contrast, same issue pretty much. Doesn't really do much for me. Highlights too. And then shadows. These aren't really doing much for me. But as you can see, these like all control something in the video. But saturation, if it's like how it is right now, it looks like this. It looks grayed out, and I don't like that. But if I bring it all the way down, it's black and white. We do not need a black and white video. But if I bring it all the way up, the saturation, like, it does look better. There is like a lot of color in the video. Like, it is better, but. I put the saturation on 200 before in some of my videos, and it looks something like this. Yeah, we don't need that much saturation. Like, it does look better on a computer, but it, it's really not better, so. I think right about here, I think. That does look a little better. Maybe 140, maybe some exposure. It does look a little better there. Now, like I said, I do have a preset, and I'm pretty sure it's just the saturation and no exposure. And that is one way of making it look better. It does look a lot better than what it was before. If I hit reset, yeah, it was like so much better. Like, yeah, a lot better. Then I'm gonna like move myself down here. We're not done. Our recording was covering this, but we're not done yet. We also got input here. We're gonna reset it and. Basically, these are like presets, like the input lot. These are like basically, I guess, presets for what the video could look like. Neither of these work for me, to be honest. But there's also white balance. That didn't really do anything. That didn't really help me much. It's making it like look a lot worse. But I guess it's like one way to help out if it actually helps. For me, it's not really helping me much. So, I think when it's at 140, somewhere around there, like helps and maybe bump up exposure. That helps. This is how I like the videos to look, but we're gonna reset this. We also got creative here. There's like a lot you can do with creative, as you can see. We got the intensity. Right now, it visually doesn't do much, but I think if we mess with these, it, it does something. Like, we got faded film. Bring it, bring it film up to 100. It basically looks like this. And I guess intensity still doesn't really do much. And that's, that's what faded film looks like. If I double click, it goes back down to zero because I don't need a faded film right now. Then we got sharpen. Basically makes it look very sharp. I don't know if I need this sharp or not. Probably not. And if we bring it down, not sharpen. And vibrancy. You know what? That, that is kind of helping a bit. But it still kind of looks off. So we're going to bring that back down. And I think if I bring it. Yeah, basically saturation, but doesn't do a great job. And, and now we got saturation. It's basically the same thing as what we did in the basic correction. Like if you bring it down, black and white, and if you bring it up, it helps with the saturation. It looks kind of similar to what I was just doing in the color correction tab. I don't know if this saturation looks better or not, but y'all be the judge of that. I mean, it, it does look better than the basic color correction. And then we also got the, the shadow tint. Not something I mess with too much. 
and highlight tint, basically same thing, and balance, basically balance out what I just did, and I don't really need any of that right now. And then that brings us to curves. Now, curves. I do not mess with curves too much, so I'm not gonna explain this well, probably. I might take these color gradient tabs and like talk about them in more, more in depth later on. But for now, I'm gonna try my best to explain the curves. Here we got white. So I can basically bring the white all the way up and it just gets white. Yeah, I don't need it like this. And I can also bring it down. It kind of makes it dark. So it kind of acts like exposure a little bit from what I'm seeing. And blue, bring it up. We get blue and then bring it down. It's kind of like that. And for some reason, that's it's green. This is the uh, RGP curves. They're basically red, green, and Blue. If I bring it a certain way, it gets this weird like color here. But I do not need it like that. And I've got hue versus saturation. I've heard if you have two points and like bring it up or down, it changes the color. I'm not noticing much, probably because of where I chose the color. I'm not, uh, I'm not really too familiar with this, but it basically, I guess, boosts. Oh, wait, I'm seeing a difference in my green shirt here. I, I think it's like boosting color of my shirt and the wall behind me. That really helps. And hue versus hue, I think it does like the same thing. Whoa. Okay, it just turned my wall green. What the heck? I don't need a green wall. I'm gonna be like, what? It's so weird. Yeah, I don't need my video looking like this at all. But I do like the, bo the boost the first one gave me. Hue versus Luna. Luma, it kind of boosts the colors too. And Luma, wow. Luma versus saturation basically makes me look like this. And saturation versus saturation. Okay, it makes me look a little red. What the heck? I, yeah, I don't know if I want to look like that in my videos, but okay. Now we're in the color match tab and I like what I'm on now and I want to like put it onto this. Because I, I don't like this right now. But this is the preset I have. The colors look a lot better. So now we're going to do something I didn't know the last time I the color green video. I was just messing with the mintones and the shadows and highlights, I think. And I don't really know exactly what to do with color match. Like, I didn't know exactly what that was. So, basically, we're going to take this right here and put it onto this video right here. And this is next to the Unity course I did. I found out in that video if you hit comparison view and I want this video and I'm gonna like scroll down to where it looks like this and then I'm gonna click apply match. As you can see it's not always perfect it still has issues with it like this is still like I think the problem is the saturation here. So if I brought up the saturation it looks a little more like the video over here. Still not perfect. That's basically what the color match does there's also face detection, and then shadows, and then midtones, and highlights. So that's what you can do with color match. In my case, not perfect, but at least now I know how to work color match. And now, we're gonna move on to HSL secretary. my favorite thing like you can change the color of your shirt and the reason why you see me wear a green shirt here and not this shirt is because the walls are blue and it would make it look kind of bad but before i show what would happen if i wear blue with a blue wall behind me i'm actually going to show what you can do with ssl's secretary you have these like eyedroppers here and you got the h s and l so q saturation and then luma and then you got the color grayscale you can change it to color black white and black Reset, the noise, blur. And you got this like little build on here with temperature, tint, contrast, sharpen, saturation. You also got these like colors you can choose, but I'm not gonna mess with that. In my case, I'm gonna take this dropper here, which doesn't have anything, and it takes the greens that I picked up. Now we're gonna hit color gray. It's hard to see, but as you can see, picking up all the greens. Now that we got my shirt picked out like this, we're actually gonna to turn off color gray. Before we do that, this is what the 
color black looks like, and then this is what the white and black looks like. I'm gonna turn it off. So far, not really different, but I could like change the color with this wheel here. And somewhere in this video, I said something about a blue shirt, so we're gonna bring down a blue. Not really the blue I'm thinking of. I was thinking more of a dark blue. This is about as dark as it could get. Not perfect, but you get the idea. Like I changed my shirt to blue. Like I could basically change the color shirt I'm wearing to all these colors, and I could also change the temperature of the shirt. I guess. But there's more you could do with the HSL temperature tab. Like, as you can see, I changed the temperature. And there's also another will before we get to that. The mintones, and the shadows, and highlights. Unfortunately, some stuff got blue, like this behind me, and then a little bit right here. That's because I probably accidentally picked that up. It is a very tricky thing to master. Quickly, I want to show the reason why I did not film this part in this blue shirt that I'm wearing right now in this video. That's because if I use an eyedropper, Basically, if I turn off this and change it to like green or whatever, it changes the shirt, but it also changes the background behind me. I really don't want that. I don't want the background to change. It kind of reminds me of one time where I did that Christmas video and when I changed the color of my Santa outfit, it looked something like this. The reason why the color green in that video looks so bad on that set that outfit was because it was a dark color and the couches around me was the same color pretty much as that coat I was wearing. So that's why the color green looked kind of bad. And then these sliders, they don't really help much either. The sliders like collect the colors around the shirt. The noise is not going to really do anything either or blur. But as you can see, wearing the shirt I was wearing, I was able to like, I was mostly able to collect the colors properly. There was in this right here. And now it's time for vignette right here. I'm pretty sure in old videos they had this. There's like a mount, but you see this white comes around or black comes around. And there's mint point. You can basically make it look like that or no vignette. And there's brownness and better. And those are all the color grain tabs of Mirror Pro. Again, I think I might take each tab and like discuss more about it because I briefly went over each tab in color grain because I don't use it that much. I basically stick with the basic curl color correction to fix up the, the video and that's about it but before i end the video here is a clip of what the color gray looks like ah time to film a youtube video hello my random sign wait this this video looks great like what why is it gray like this let's fix that all right, much better. All right, let's continue. Wait, I like this shirt that I'm wearing, but we'll wear a different color. We'll fix that too. All right, much better. Now we can get started with this video. Wait, the video over there. I like the color green better on that video. So let's make it look like that color green over there. Oh, okay, that's not the color green I meant to match. Okay, much better. Why is there a vignette on the video? I, I don't need this. Okay, much better. We got the color green we want. I have a blue shirt on. So now let's get the video started. Hello, my random signers. Welcome to this video. Woo! And that's all I have for this video. Now it's time for the outro. All right, y'all. That's the end of the video. I hope y'all enjoyed. It was really fun doing color green again. Again, I, mo I mentioned a few videos ago that I've done color green before, but I lost the footage um, somewhere. But it was nice getting a chance to do a color green video again. And the reason why I did like color green video instead of going to the spin wheel is because that was the only thing left with the spin wheel. So there was no point of like doing the spin wheel for this video. But in the next Premiere Pro video in August, I will have more things on there. And now I'm not really sure what I'm gonna have on it. I might do like basic stuff, like maybe taking a deeper look at the effects controls and some easy effects. And I might like add Blurring too and like stuff like that. Stuff I haven't talked about in the Premiere Pro series yet. That's what I plan to do. Those are the things I plan to put on this video next. But for now, that's all I got for this video. So with that being said, hope you all enjoyed and don't forget to keep on signing. Bye!